you're on testosterone and suddenly your testicles are shrinking, your sperm count drops, and your partner wants to start a family. What now? This is the reality of a lot of men. But what if there's a way to keep your testicles working even while you're on TRT? In this video, we're going to break down the truth about HCG, what it is, how it works, who actually benefits from it, and how to avoid the most common mistakes that leave men worse off than before. So let's dive in. Let's start with where ACG actually comes from. ACG is human chorionic gonadotropin, which is a hormone originally derived from the placenta during pregnancy. It's produced in the placenta and plays a critical role in maintaining progesterone levels in early pregnancy. In medicine, ACG is either isolated from urine of pregnant women or produced via a recombinant biotechnology. The version that's most commonly used in men's health is pharmaceutical grade and carefully purified, but it's worth noting its origins to appreciate the hormone's unique physiologic properties. ACG is not testosterone. It's a hormone that mimics luteinizing hormone, the signal in your pituitary that sends a message from your brain to your testes to make more testosterone and sperm. In men, ACG binds to LH receptors on the Leydig cells in the testes. This stimulates intratesticular testosterone production, which is essential for spermatogenesis, therefore improving sertoli cell function and testicular volume. Think of it like this. Think of like LH is your body's gas pedal for testosterone. But when you go on exogenous testosterone, the brain sees enough testosterone in circulation and then stops sending LH and FSH to the testes. That's when the testicles shrink, sperm production crashes, and fertility definitely takes a hit. ACG bypasses the brain entirely. It binds directly to the testicular receptors, keeping the factory running even when the central command is offline. This is why ACG is not just a fertility drug. It's a functional hormone support that works to help preserve testicular output, has some mood stability effects, and neuroendocrine tone while on TRT. I'm talking about the pleiotropic effects of ACG. Let's clear up some confusion. ACG has multiple valid clinical uses in men. As monotherapy, you want to think about this one. While some men with early stage hypogonadism may try ACG alone to avoid HRT, the clinical reality is that it often is not strong enough to make a meaningful impact. Testosterone levels might rise slightly, but rarely to the levels needed for full symptomatic relief or performance restoration. So while the theory exists, its practical effects is usually negligible in moderate to severe cases. A second use for ACG is alongside TRT to preserve fertility, testicular volume, and intratesticular testosterone. So you still get some function, which needs to be monitored. The third is post-cycle therapy, so after anabolic steroid use to awaken the HPT axis, but it's more directly to bring back the testes. Think of it as the testes are shrunken and receded. It's a lot harder for the brain to turn back on with small surface area. So ACG hits the receptors and brings volume and fullness to the testes, increasing the chances for the brain to turn back on. A fourth use for ACG is fertility protocols, which is often combined with HMG, which is an FSH analog, and clomiphene to support sperm production. Here's an example. I had a 38-year-old male on TRT for two years, had great numbers, total testosterone around 1,000, but had some testicular atrophy and is wanting to plan out when to conceive. So we added 500 IUs of ACG three times per week and monitored estradiol, hematocrit, and mood. Six weeks in, we added 12.5 milligrams of enclomiphene every other day to reignite LH and FSH production from the brain. By three months, his sperm count rebounded from undetectable to 6 million. His testicular volume improved and his mood and energy was okay with some slight agitation, but he did all of this without stopping TRT. While 6 million is still low in average sperm production, all you need is one. With that amount, it set him up perfectly and he had his first son. That's the power of personalized hormone care. We also need to acknowledge that while ACG is clinically useful, we still don't have full understanding of its long-term effects on the body. ACG is pleiotropic, meaning that it has more than one possible function. It doesn't just stimulate the testes. It may interact with other receptors throughout the body, which means it can have effects beyond fertility and testosterone alone. Yes, it can be short-term solution for fertility support, but it's not without complexity. ACG will increase testosterone levels, even when you're already on TRT. So that has to be factored into in the overall dosing plan. If you're not adjusting for that increase, you may unintentionally push estrogen too high and alter DHT levels or overload the hormone pathways. Here's where a lot of guys get it wrong. They take too much, too often, or with no plan. 
Typically, starting protocols very depend on the goal. For fertility, preserving effects while on TRT, I typically start anywhere from like 100 to 500 IUs two to three times per week. For men who are more prone to estrogen spikes or mood shifts, I prefer to begin at a lower dose, usually around like 100 to 250 IU, then I titrate up based upon labs and clinical response. For those coming off of anabolic use or experiencing severe testicular atrophy, a more aggressive approach is sometimes needed, such as 1,000 to 1,500 IU every other day for two to three weeks before transitioning to agents like enclomiphene. It is important to know, chronic high doses over 2,000 IUs per shot or daily use can desensitize LH receptors and reduce the effectiveness and cause downstream issues. The goal is to use it strategically. And yes, there are side effects. Estrogen can spike due to an increase in the intratesticular aromatizations or lead to symptoms like emotional volatility, nipple sensitivity, or water retention. Some men even experience mood volatility or often tied to neurosteroid fluctuation that HCG can influence. And one of the most important risks, desensitization of LH receptors. This happens when ACG is overused or dosed too aggressively, blunting its effect over time. This is why I monitor all ACG patients closely. It's easy to confuse ACG with Clomid and Clomiphene or HMG, but they are all working very differently. ACG mimics LH and acts directly on the testes to stimulate testosterone production. Clomid or Clomiphene citrate works at a pituitary level to increase LH and FSH, but often comes with more mood-related side effects. And Clomiphene is a pure isomer of Clomid and has a cleaner mental profile, making it a better option for many men. HMG provides FSH analogs and is typically added for direct spermatogenesis support or the production of sperm. If you want to preserve testicular function while on TRT, ACG is a good option. If your goal is to restart natural hormone production after coming off testosterone or anabolics, enclomiphene or clomid are better options. And if you're actively trying to conceive, combining ACG with HMG can give you the best shot at boosting sperm production and fertility outcomes. If you're using ACG, you must test regularly. The labs I track include estradiol to monitor for aromatization and early signs of estrogen dominance. I also track LH and FSH for androgen balance. I monitor DHT, sex hormone binding globulin, total and free testosterone. And if the fertility is a goal, semen analysis is essential. Most importantly, I test based on context and timeline, not a cookie cutter checklist. Here are a few common misconceptions. First, ACG is only for fertility, not true. It also supports androgen integrity, mood stability or instability, depending on the person, testicular volume and potentially neurosteroid production. Second, if I don't want kids, I don't need ACG. That's a bit short-sighted because many men report improved emotional resilience, better energy, and a sense of completeness when testicular output is maintained, even if fertility is not the goal. And third, you can take HCG indefinitely. Definitely not. It needs to be pulsed, monitored, and used with strategy. Chronic use without direct usually leads to diminished returns and receptor burnout. At the end of the day, it's a tool, and like any tool, it works best in the hands of someone who understands how and why they are using it. If you want to help build a customized ACG or hormone strategy, book a consult and use the link below. I'll walk you through your labs, goals, and next steps. And if you're looking for no BS education on hormones, peptides, recovery, and performance health, subscribe and stick around. Take care of yourself, stay smart, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next one.